the cure for diseases. If we follow the teachings of Jesus, Jesus simply said, Come to me, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. And rest, we know, actually helps overcome <coughs> uh, many human ailments. But Jesus also said that the law is not done away with. And in the law, it says, God says, if you obey me, I won't put these diseases on you. So from a Christian or a follower of uh, Jesus, which is translated from Joshua, which was translated from the Hebrew uh, Yeshua, but it's known in modern Christian circles, he's known as Jesus. But if you use Joshua, then you have this biblical example of uh, Joshua who took people out of, led people out of the desert into the promised land that was flowing with milk and honey and everything physical was there for good health and God told the people of Israel he says well if you obey me you won't have these diseases that, that Egypt had and so part of Jesus teaching is simply obey God uh, on, on the physical level rest when God says to rest eat what God says to eat Jesus said repent change your lifestyle it's not really that different of a message than what modern science has proved change your lifestyle and live longer change your lifestyle and live happier it's, it's, it's not like this knowledge is somehow way out there that you know we can't find it or that we need to spend billions and billions of dollars to research it King Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun and if you read the ancient texts or if you just simply believe what Jesus said and he said I tell you earthly things and if you don't believe the earthly things that he tells you you're not going to get the spiritual things I mean, he healed people, whether you believe it or not. Told them good stories, fed them good food. Jesus said, well, if you're ashamed of my words, me and my words, I'll be ashamed of you. So I'm not ashamed of what Jesus said. He said, repent, change your lifestyle. Obey God, and, and, and you'll live healthier. You know, after the obedience, you might just see that God is really knows what he's talking about after all he created everything right I mean how many how many people today they they get some product and they start messing with it operating it whatever without thoroughly reading the instruction manual and then they look at the human body and say oh it didn't come with an instruction manual but Jesus or Yeshua said oh yeah it did <laughs> it's been written for thousands of years and the human body hasn't changed. I talked to a trauma surgeon one time. He says, oh yeah, the, being a doctor, that's a racket, man. The human body hasn't changed for thousands and thousands of years. It's the same thing. If you listen to uh, Dr. David Page, head of the Whitehead Institute at MIT, who's been researching the Y chromosome for the last 30 years, he's got a talk on YouTube. This is Why Sex Matters. And, and he, he's got these very basic scientific uh, structures that he deals with. Logic, thoughts. Is yeah, well, you know, men are X, Y, or Y X, and women are X X, and they go about their different their their business differently. One's a testosterone-based system, and the other one is an estrogen-based system doesn't take a rocket scientist and then figure out that <clears throat> you got to treat them differently <sighs> there might even be different foods that they prefer I mean there's a difference between a gasoline engine and a diesel engine and an airplane that uses aviation fuel it's still all refined fossil fuels 
but was refined differently and the engines operate differently. Yeah, and even the scientist, like David Page, he says, yeah, well, the basic study of disease is flawed in modern medicine. It's flawed in a fundamental way because they don't make this difference between male and female, which we know go about their business differently. And so you get back to the teachings of Jesus. He says, no, in the beginning he made them male and female. There's no evolution. He says, in the beginning he made them male and he made them female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, cleave unto his wife. The two become one flesh. And what God has put together, don't take it apart. Very basic things about health. Very basic things about life that all of science has gotten around to reproving or researching. It's all the same. Science can't stand up there and say, hey, we've got some great... No, you researched it. It's been printed for thousands of years. It's right there in all the parables of Jesus. I will give you rest. He said, yeah, well, it was written in the book. It was written eat honey because it is good. Right? Men, they go along and they take canes and beets and all these vegetables and they, they tear them apart. They rip them apart, you know? Look, I put together in perfect balance. And they refine it and they get all the sugar out of it, right? And then they sell it really cheaply to you. Whereas the Bible says eat honey because it is good. And the scientists today have proven, oh yeah, they're both sweet, they're both, a sh they're both a form of sugar. But your body will take honey apart in your stomach, whereas the refined cane sugars and vegetable sugars, it takes apart in, I think it's like your lower intestine or something, where it's more work. <laughs> so the science behind what Jesus said is there. Yeah, do what he says, you get rest. That's the cure for our diseases, following the teachings of Jesus. And that doesn't mean you go to these churches and listen to some man blah, blah, blah about it. Open up your Bible for yourself. Develop your own relationship with God, with Yeshua, who they translate into the name Jesus. Yeah, he'll bring you out of the wilderness of man's knowledge and medicine. Which, by the way, if you read the scientific journals, or anything that's scientific. I read the scientists on the web. The scientists are going to South America and other places in the world and they're finding these tribes that are living out away from modern society. And these people are healthy and they're reproducing. Right? They don't have the diseases we have. In fact, the microbes that live on them can kill our medicine. See, we modern man develops this medicine to kill the bugs, right, that we have. It's an antibiotic. Modern medicine is creating killers to kill our diseases. Whereas these natives that are living out there off the land and they're eating, you know, the wild stuff and ex eat diet and exercise, right? Fresh air, <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> All the things that are talked about in the Bible, that's what they're doing. And the bugs, the microbes that live on them are stronger than our medicines that we use to kill the diseases, the, the bugs that we have. And the scientists are like, what? Yeah, if these people came into society, they, they would kill off. They would kill off our medicines. <laughs> Which leads you back to you know, our concept of medicine is really flawed then. If we're spending billions of dollars to research ways of killing off diseases that nature already has microbes that'll kill off our medicine, it'd probably kill off the disease then too, right? Or the bugs that come along with the disease. Because maybe the whole concept about our concept about disease and what it is is wrong 
even even much more wrong than what scientists already know. Because it could be that because we don't obey God, we're just plain weak enough to let these weakling bugs hurt us. Think about it. Survival of the fittest, if you believe that. Because you don't do what God says in the scripture, you're not the fittest. Therefore, you're not going to survive. So, modern man does all this stuff to help us defend ourselves. You know, clothes, buildings, all this other stuff, and, and, and drugs, and all these therapies and stuff. And God says, well, just obey me, and you know, you'll be strong enough. In fact, the bugs that live on you will be stronger than any medicine you can make. And that's just science. Take the word of Jesus, take the word of Yeshua. Compare it with nature, compare it with what man can prove. And, they, and they've proven it already. I, I read it in a, a, a Fast Company magazine back in 2005. This is, doctors know 80% of our health care costs are caused by our lifestyle choices. 80% it's because of how we choose to live. And this one article about these microbes and being stronger than our own medicine, they're like, oh yeah, any contact with modern society weakens you enough. Makes you weaker. Therefore, you need the medicine. So if you combine the scientific evidence, the, the archaeological evidence, I mean, they dig up people from years and years and years ago, thousands of years ago, and these people were strong. They had heavy bones. And, you know, some of these people were, you know, compared to modern man. Modern man's like some kind of like weak leftover. Um, byproduct compared to what our ancestors really were and what they did and how they could live and survive. Now, yeah, one archaeologist says, yeah, you could take a Neanderthal and shave them and put them in modern dress and walk them down any city street. Nobody would know it. Except for the fact that you'd probably be five times stronger than any modern man. Yeah, so getting back to what Yeshua said. If you obey me, uh, you won't have these diseases. In fact, you'll have rest. In fact, you'll have the abundant life. And all of our science supports it. Uh, we've researched it enough that we know. And this is just in the last 50 or so years, 100 or so years. And history repeats itself, so, you know, this has probably been done hundreds and thousands of times. Oh, yeah, that's right. That is the right way to live. Well, let's hope the governing authorities and the people who have power and position are hurting all the people into their little lemming societies, keeping us locked into this modern city and everything where we need their drugs. Oh, wait, that's kind of like an addic addiction, right? Ooh, that's almost racketeering, isn't it? Come live with us, be weak, you need our drugs, you need all this stuff. Nothing new under the sun. And the savior of the world says, hey, there is a better way. You don't have to go with the crowd. It's got a whole lots of parables. Today's society is like that uh, guy smoking in the coffee shop. The coffee sucks the water out of him. The smoke fills up his lungs. And he goes to his high pressure job where he gets paid a lot of money. He's got a lot of stress. But hey, he looks good to the neighbors and he can afford a big house and all the fancy cars and everything. But, you know, they're his choices. And then he goes to the doctor and says, hey, make me well. And the doctor sits there and like, 
Do I tell this guy just to change his lifestyle? Or do I humor him? Give him a few pills and say, hey, you know, pay for my education. Because, <laughs> you know, we know better. You know, and we need to earn a living too and look good. <laughs> yeah, Plato wrote about that. <laughs> All the people chained to the walls guessing at shadows, not ascending into the light of the truth. But hey, they have a lot of fun guessing at the shadows. That's a great big old boys club, or girls club, you know, it just depends on who's in it. And they pass their lives away. Just don't want to get chained in that dark little cave with them. So ascend into the light of the truth. Oh, by the way, Yeshua said he is the light. He is the truth. That's the cure for diseases. Change your lifestyle. Believe Yeshua. 